Hey guys, uh, my name is Jim Tyrock, and today we will be painting model locomotives with spray paints. Now, uh, most people do, when they do custom painting, they like to use airbrushes, but I'm one of the few people who actually enjoy painting with spray cans. That's right, regular spray paint that you can get at Michael's, any hobby shop, or any home, any home improvement store. It's cheaper than getting an airbrush and all the lacquer and uh, specialized paints and everything else that requires. And you don't need a booth. All you need is a piece of plywood, an outdoor, and a model of train to paint. Now today, I'm going to be doing two locomotives. The first one is a Athern Blue Box uh, GP50. Uh, right now it's a Union Pacific model. Uh, looks like it had been custom numbered here to 958. Uh, pretty lousy numbering job if you ask me. The other one is also an Athern Blue Box engine. It is, uh, of course, a BNSF C44-9W right now. But when I'm done with it, it's going to be a very nice fictional uh, Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern Mount Rushmore locomotive. That's right, dm &E. As for the GP50 here, I think I am going to do this one into a Buffalo and Pacific uh, in the Genesee and Wyoming orange scheme. Now, <clears throat> no one makes the exact color for the DM, DM and E blue. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using uh, this tester enamel. Uh, it's dark blue, costs like five six dollars at your local uh, Michaels uh, the, I paid like five and a half at uh, a local hobby shop here in St. Louis called Mark Twain now for the Buffalo and Pacific no one makes the exact color orange just like with the dm &E. however after doing some research and talk to a bunch of people I'm gonna use a color that's also available through uh, testers it's called competition orange it's mainly used for model cars but it also closely represents uh, Milwaukee Road locomotives when they first were delivered now when you're painting models especially ones that are custom that are already factory painted the first thing you want to do is remove the shell just like that now this this, this area is going to have to be painted black. That's So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the couplers. Uh, you don't want to paint over the couplers, especially if they're KDs like these. And this appears, this is the older blue box uh, trucks or side frames for the EMD Bloomberg. So they're not as detailed. If they were the more detailed runs like from the Ready to Rolls or the Genesis series, which I have painted before, I would remove them. But, matter of fact, I will go ahead and remove them. Normally, what I like to do is I just like to take a paintbrush to them. So, we'll just go ahead and remove these. Now, I on off to, off to my sides here, I got a couple of empty box lids. It's always a good idea to have lids or something that you can put the pieces on, especially if you're working in a carpeted area like I'm doing. That way you don't lose any any parts. So we got those removed. Let's move them all up to the side here and put the frame here. Now this has got the older metal handrails. So what we're going to do is we're going to just pop them off just like this. Some of them probably won't want to move. It looks like all these except for one. Oh, well, no, there it goes. A lot of them, if they're already, if you get them secondhand, they'll not want to come out. Just like this piece right here. Uh, gotta, some of them you're going to really have to work at. It's always great when you have handrails that are already, already painted because they just, that will, the paint will keep the handrails from moving. So once it's all painted and if any of the holes are covered up, they won't, uh, it'll be much easier to locate where the holes are. Then that's a good thing too, especially if you put decals for a safety strike right here. You don't have to go and ruin the detail job. 
or the decal job, I'm sorry. The one thing about Union Pacific engines is that the yellow is a one of those colors that is really hard to uh, cover up. Now this is going to be like the fourth or fifth there you go, Union Pacific engine that I'll be repainting. These hand drills are actually coming out pretty well, I should not say anything because that one does not want to come out. But these are coming out real easy. Now I do want to state, I don't know if I stated this before, and you probably saw when I take the took the shell off the chassis, that it's a non-powered. And that's the same with this dash nine here. Okay, we got the handrails off. Now this you want to take the cab off. Now this is usually the tricky part. There we go. Because you want to get this little piece here out. Sometimes they'll just come right out. Sometimes they want to put up a fight like this one wants to. There we go. Eh, it looks like I cracked it, but that's that's something a little super glue can fix. The horn normally I don't take those out because it's usually painted the same color anyway. Now this next part I do like to take out is the number boards. These are usually the hardest pieces to get out, so you need to find what I do with it. Something small enough that will fit in those holes. Now, will this do? Nope, that's just too big. Here we go. This might work if I can cut off this Q-tip end. There we go. And will that work? Of course not. So what I'll do is this. There we go. That should work. Nope. It looks like I can just. Well, first, let's just take out the glass here for the headlights. And those came out, that one came out pretty easy. They both did. Put these off to the side. I do this so, the, so it's easier to paint. Ah, maybe I can just push them out like. Ouch! Hmm. Always be careful around razor blades. That hurt. Now I should have. It's a MVP vapor. I quit smoking about three months ago. Uh, let's see here. Does this have anything I can use? Wait a minute. Here we go. Here's what I did with it. A wall nail. You always want to find something. Normally I'm more prepared. But before I start this video, there we go. I was doing some house chores. So I, of all the things I forgot, I forgot the thing I use, which is normally a small screwdriver to remove the handrail. Or not the handrails, the number boards. There we go. Number boards are out. And you just basically have a regular cab. Put those off to the side there. Take the long hood. 
And it looks like these number boards also come out. I like taking the number boards out because I like it's much, much easier to paint that way. There goes that. And there goes that. Uh, put these off to the side here. Uh, let's see here. Oh wow, someone didn't even. Yeah, someone didn't even. Uh, those number boards just came right off. Yeah, no one bothered to uh, seal those decals. I'm just going to leave those number boards there. Because nowadays you're not seeing lo locomotives with mirror number boards anymore. I mean, you still do. It just depends on who. It also depends on your preference. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that one. It's already fallen off. So there you have it. You have a GP50 all stripped and ready for paint. We'll go ahead and keep the cab off and we'll paint that separately. And we'll just put it back on when it comes time to, for decals because this is all going to be black and orange. Halloween. I mean, it's only suitable because Halloween's right around the corner. Now we do the same thing with this the dash 9. And. This one, the couplers are going to have to come off. Well, you get the basic idea. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver to do that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and start painting this one. And when we come back up here, I'll have a screwdriver and we can start disassembling the dash. Alright.